Welcome everybody. I'm so excited to get started. My name is Grace Wenzel hey, and Grace. I am here from Drake. Do you, Hi, mean, do you want me to start or do you want to do a little introduction first? I, yeah, I would love to. Drake University Great. is so, so ready to go. They're like being the Bulldogs. Let's do so. I'm going to take over and just do a very quick introduction here and then I promise I will turn it right back over to you. But I first want to get us all started by thanking everyone for being here and going through some very quick housekeeping. Um, we have a great group of institutions here who are excited to share all about their campuses. Uh, just a few notes, you do not have access to audio or video for this. We can't see or hear you, but we do have that Q&A function turned on. So make sure and use that function to get your questions in. You don't have to wait to submit your questions for a certain institution. If you have questions for any or all of our presenters today, please feel free to use that Q&A function throughout the entire event. Uh, another note, this is one of many different sessions happening. Hopefully you joined us earlier and then also you will join us later after this session to learn from a few other institutions as well. But we do have this session along with all of the others being recorded. And within about a week, you can catch that recording at strivescan.com forward slash college essay guy. And I put that link in the chat for you, but now we are going to turn it over to the most important event and that is hearing from our institutions. And as you may have guessed, Drake University is going to kick us off today. So whenever you are ready, take it away, Grace. Thanks so much. I was clearly very excited to get everything kicked off. So, so excited to be here with y'all. My name is Grace Wenzel. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Admission here at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. So excited to share a little bit about our institution with y'all. So to get to know Drake, we are going to click through some fast facts and just get everybody oriented to our institution here in Des Moines. So the first thing I would love to share is just a little bit about Des Moines. We're the state capital here in Iowa. Um, we have around 600,000 people in Des Moines. So we certainly are not a small farm town like you might picture when you picture a city here in Iowa. And Drake is the premier institution here in town. So Des Moines is one of 11 state capitals in the country that doesn't have a big arm of a state school. So it's really cool is that Drake is the big school here in town. So we're the hometown team. We get so much support for our Bulldogs from our Des Moines community. And it's a really awesome, vibrant urban community that our students get to take advantage of. I have to share Griff. So he is the first person that you'll meet on campus. He is our live mascot. This is a real dog that exists, not just for marketing materials. If you're looking for a very cute Instagram account to follow, I highly recommend following Drake U Griff on Instagram. I'll drop it in the chat if anyone's curious. But what's cool about this dog and, and the community that is kind of surrounding him is that it's just a fun way for students to stay involved, for alumni to stay involved. And we do so much work with our live mascot program. He's also also a trained therapy dog. So he offers a lot of services, not only for our Drake students, but also for um, elementary schools within the Drake neighborhood and with um, retirement home communities in our community as well. So wonderful use of our Drake spirit um, is through this live mascot program, which is a really fun, fun way that Drake is kind of set apart. Just some quick facts for y'all. Drake is a little under 3,000 undergraduate students, so we think that is the perfect size because you're getting the benefits of a small school, but you are getting the support and the network and the opportunities that a big school provides because of so many opportunities that are cooked together with our Des Moines community here in town. So we like to think of it as the perfect size. You get the small school benefits with the big city atmosphere. One thing that I think a lot of people are surprised when they hear about Drake is that nearly 70% of our students actually come in from outside the state of Iowa. So we have undergrads from 44 states, from 37 different countries, and then a vibrant alumni network in all 50 states and so many different countries across the globe. So when you're thinking about this kind of road trip, right, that we're on together tonight to get to know some other schools, know that you will certainly not be the lone person from your state when you come to work, um, but you'll certainly meet folks from all over, all over the country and all over the world when you start at Drake University. Again, because Drake is a smaller school, I think sometimes people put, you know, different sized institutions in boxes um, because of their different experiences, but I hope that this is kind of showing you a different side to what a small school can actually be for some students. We have over 140 different student organizations, so a 
ton of opportunities and ways for our students to get involved and get active. We have religious opportunities. We have student government. We have sports. I am not a sporty spice. If you're a sporty spice, God bless you. But we have intramurals. We have all of these different types of clubs and organizations that you can take advantage of as a student to really build your Drake community. We also have Division One Athletics here on campus. So you have the opportunity to really partake in a vibrant athletic community here on campus. All of our sporting events, men's and women's basketball, football, volleyball, golf, tennis, they're all free for Drake students to attend. So if you are not at a Division I athletic caliber and you won't be continuing on in your sporting career um, at your college or um, at next institution, you will certainly have the opportunity to support our student athletes here on campus. So free for Drake students, you get to attend all of these fun and exciting games and really cheer on Drake Bulldogs, which is so much fun and a great use of everyone's time and energy. Some things about our classrooms, we have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So that means you are going to get a lot of access to professors right away. And our average class size at Drake is 21 students. So it's going to probably look and feel really similar to your high school classes, if not a little bit smaller already, um, because we want you to make sure that our students are getting access to those professors, access to the degrees and the majors and the opportunities that they're interested in so that they can make those decisions about their future plans even that much earlier. And part of that, the way that we kind of explore things, we have over a hundred different majors here on campus, 36 graduate programs in six different colleges um, across our university. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences, that's where you'll find things like English and history and biology and chemistry, sociology, psychology, those are kind of what you'll see in the College of Arts and Sciences. In our School of Education, if you're looking to be a teacher, you'll be able to explore elementary education or secondary education, which is middle school and into high school. The College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences offer um, houses a lot of our pre-professional programs. So our pre-pharmacy degree, which is a two plus four program, you graduate from Drake in six years with your PharmD. We have um, pre-athletic training, pre-occupational therapy, and, and our health sciences majors also housed in our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. In the College of Business and Public Administration, that's where you'll find things like marketing or entrepreneurship, economics. Those are those kind of spaces that you'll see in the College of Business. And then in our School of Journalism and Mass Communication, things like public relations, strategic political communications, advertising, digital media production, magazine media. So those are the things that you'll find in our School of Journalism and Mass Communication. And then our law school, that's an opportunity for graduate school level programming. Um, what's so cool about these programs, I'm a Drake grad myself. And so what's some, one thing that I really appreciated when I was a student is just the flexibility. So you are admitted to Drake, you're admitted right into your degree program. And then you get to start those classes day one here on campus. So you have a lot of opportunity to find what is going to be the best fit for you. One other thing about Drake, and I know cost is gonna be a really important piece, we have our tuition guarantee. So that means that the um, tuition cost is locked in for students, undergraduate students for four years. You won't see an increase in tuition cost year over year at Drake. We have a lot of opportunities for scholarships for students too, so I encourage you to check out our website. And then to apply. So as applications come up here at the end of summer at the start of the school year for any of our rising seniors that are in the crowd tonight, we have a free application, drake.edu backslash apply, or we're on the Common App, free at both methods. And we have a test optional opportunity as well for students to complete their application. So I hope you can picture yourself at Drake. I hope you got this a nice little snapshot. Um, I hope you could hear my dog whining in the background. Um, but I am so thrilled to be here. Any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the chat. Thank you so much for your time and attention tonight. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Drake University. We appreciate you kicking us off. We're going to turn it over now to Marquette University. Whenever you are ready, take it away. Awesome. Good evening. And I will have to add on to Grace. My dog just started chewing on her bone. So hopefully y'all won't hear that. Um, but let me share my screen real quick and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So again, my name is Katie Schumacher. I am one of the assistant directors within the Office of Admissions here at Marquette. And I'm also a proud alum of Marquette. So not only do I have the lens professionally, but also as an alum as well. And to start off, um, we are located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we are considered a city campus. 
But even though we're a city campus, we're also very residential. So 95% of our students live on campus. Um, you are required to live in the residence halls your freshman and your sophomore year. So that really creates that strong sense of community at Marquette. We're a medium-sized school. We have 8,000 undergrad, 4,000 grad, so about 12,000 total, right in between that really, really large school um, that could have about 40,000 students in that smaller school. So that medium size allows for a lot of unique opportunities that I'll talk about as well. We're also a Jesuit institution. So we're one of the 27 Jesuit universities across the country. Um, if you don't know what that means, the Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And they kind of founded the 27 Jesuit universities across the country. So year one, Loyola Chicago, Boston College, Gonzaga, those are all Jesuit schools. Uh, you don't have to be Catholic uh, to come to Marquette. That's just one of our identities. But as a Jesuit school, Inside the classroom, we're really focused on that liberal arts curriculum. The Jesuits were the founders of liberal arts curriculum. And so we not only want you to be great in your major, but also have that moral and ethical and social justice mindset. And so you'll take a core curriculum, which focuses on expanding that and all students take those classes alongside their major courses. And then outside the classroom, service is a big part of Jesuit education. So about 80% of our students engage in some form of service while they're at Marquette. And at Marquette, we have seven different academic colleges, the College of Health Sciences, the College of Engineering, the College of Nursing, the College of Business, the College of Communication, the College of Education, and we are direct entry. So that means when you apply to Marquette, you apply directly to one of those seven. And once you're in, you're in. You don't have to worry about reapplying or anything like that. And you'll start taking classes in your major right away as a freshman. However, if you're not really sure what you wanna do, that's okay. You can apply to any of those seven undecided. You don't formally have to clear your major until you're a sophomore. And regardless of the academic college, you'll also be assigned an academic advisor. And you have to meet with them at least once a semester in order to help you pick classes, but really also to be that mentor for you. Again, going back to that medium size and that support. If you are interested in any pre-health programs or pre-med, you'll also have a pre-health advisor. So we do have a pre-health advising office within either the College of Arts and Sciences or the College of Health Sciences. And across those seven different academic colleges, we have 80 different majors. And you can kind of see all those on our main site. I won't go into all of those. Similar kind of what I talked about as well is that we are um, a Jesuit school and part of Jesuit education, like I said, is being involved in not only service, but a variety of student organizations as well. We have over 325 student organizations on campus. And not only is it important, of course, to find that academic fit and what major, but also that personal fit and that sense of community. And that's really important to who we are as a Jesuit institution. About 81% of our students are involved in a student organization. 29% of our students study abroad. About 75% of our students have an internship and about 21% of our students engage in research. And a lot of these opportunities, especially those that are internships, are really related to our location in the city of Milwaukee. We are about a mile and a half um, from Lake Michigan, one, so you not only have access to the city, but also kind of the lakefront and that nature as well. But the city has a variety of different Fortune 500 companies like Northwestern Mutual, Harley Davidson, as well as a variety of hospitals nearby, schools for our education students. And so the proximity to the city allows for our students to use it both professionally and socially. So there's always something to do, but you also have access to a variety of those professional opportunities as well. And then lastly, I think it's also important just to touch on um, just some overall kind of outcomes and in thinking about when you come to Marquette, what are the benefits? Um, college can be expensive. And so I think it's always important to touch on this as well but nearly 90% of our graduates um, will graduate on time in their program. I think a lot of that has to do with our smaller class sizes. Average class size is about 24 students and student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. With that, that really creates that strong relationships with professors and advisors. You're not just a number at Marquette and because you're direct entry, you're getting into your program right away and you're connecting with those professors right from the beginning. We have multiple different accelerated degree programs. One in particular that's quite popular is our sixth year direct entry doctoral program in physical therapy that's ranked 16th in the country. There's also a variety of other ones as well. And then over 75% of our graduates will graduate with relevant experience. Again, I think that has to do with 
the fact that you have that close relationship with your professor, as well as the access to hospitals, internships, things like that. And then we're a top 10 university for job placements. And then we also have a really vast and engaged alumni network. I recruit in Hawaii, for example, and if I wear a sweatshirt um, that says Marquette is always guaranteed that someone will say something. And so I think that's, that's really important, um, especially as you're looking to go to different places after you graduate. Um, I'll also mention that we are open for visits um, every day uh, during um, the summer and we're doing in-person visits, but also have some virtual options as well. Um, if you have any questions, don't feel free. Um, feel free to just give us a call or send us an email. Um, we hope to kind of walk with you on your journey. So thanks so much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Marquette University. All right. I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is ready to receive all of your questions, but now we are going to hear from Beloit College. Take it away. Good evening. My name is Karen Smith. I am the Midwest Regional Admission Manager um, at Beloit College in Beloit, Wisconsin, just down the road from Marquette University. We are a private liberal arts college, 175 years old. Uh, we actually were established before the city of Beloit and before the state of Wisconsin were chartered. So they have grown up around us. We have this amazing location in that we are just 90 minutes north of Chicago, less than a, an hour south of Madison, Wisconsin, where the University of Wisconsin is, and about an hour, as I mentioned, away from Milwaukee, all available, available via public transportation. Responding to COVID, um, responding to the, package, to the uh, pandemic almost a little over a year ago um, was a challenge that none of us could anticipate. And at the way we quickly determined that not only were we going to not be stymied by this, but that COVID would serve as a catalyst to create an even better experience for our students. And the result was the Beloit Action Plan, which is a suite of academic, personal and financial support programs that were quickly launched for our community. Um, and we didn't create a better experience for our students, we did it with them. And so it was our students who spent time, a significant amount of time with our COVID task force, helping to, to figure out what learning would look like this last year. And when the Back to Beloit plan was issued up, um, it was issued up by our students to their peers and to the community. The result was a realistic and safe set of behavioral guidelines developed by our students, for our students, and delivered from our students to our students and to the entire Bullock community, and it's worked. So this past year, 80% of our students were on campus all year studying safely and successfully in person. It's very much a hallmark of who Beloit is and how we operate. We're a community that is governed and led by our own community. Um, we are a place built on and supported by collaborative relationships. And this really um, highlighted that. We're a diverse community um, in both identities and interests. You'll see some numbers here. We have very small classes on average, 12 students in a class, student faculty ratio of 10 to one. We also are per capita Wisconsin's most diverse college. We talk about diversity in a number of different ways, um, certainly uh, cultural and racial diversity, as well as religious diversity, geographic diversity, socioeconomic diversity, and gender diversity. We pride ourselves on bringing together a number of students with different backgrounds, different experiences into a small caring place and having them really appreciate learning from each other both in the classroom and outside the classroom. They receive a lot of personal attention and creative ways to study and create their own majors as well as majoring, minoring, double majoring. This facility is just a year old. Um, we call it the powerhouse. And um, I will tell you that it is a, re it's literally a repurposed coal energy plant that had sat in vacant, that had sat vacant right along our river just to very short distance from campus um, that the college purchased and went into um, partnership with the city of Beloit in order to recreate a facility that now functions as 125 square foot, both student activity facility and athletic facility. Um, 
It's a student center, a fitness center. Um, it sits right on the Rock River adjacent to downtown where the college has two buildings in addition to the powerhouse. Um, our Center for Entrepreneurship and our Art Center are both located downtown in Chicago, or in Chicago, in Beloit, which is a quick three minute walk down the hill. Um, we are very much a part of the community, not just an entity that sits at the top of the hill. Our students, 95% of them live on campus um, and are on campus all four years. So we are very much a residential community. We realize that we are only as exciting as the things that are going on within our community. And so you'll see here that um, we have 18 varsity teams at Beloit, about 40% of our student body are varsity athletes. We have a good number of clubs and intramurals. We have um, a very active dance, theater and music programs. We have two working museums on our campus and our location lends itself to students being able to take advantage of internships, both in the city of Beloit, surrounding areas throughout the country and internationally. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, we're a community built on relationships and through our advanced mentoring program, which is part of the Beloit Action Plan, Students are matched with a faculty member who serves as their first mentor and advisor. And they're matched with this faculty mentor within three days of committing to Beloit. So almost all of our students are being matched up with a mentor and in touch with that mentor, faculty member, while they're still in high school. Um, advisors work with students on trans transitioning from high school to Beloit, choosing classes, um, figuring out schedules, things like that. And then a student's advisory group becomes their first circle of peers. Um, the AMP program spills into career channels, which you can read some more about on our website. And quickly, here's some figures, facts, statistics about our admissions standards and my contact information. Thank you for spending Fantastic. Thank you so much, Beloit College. Okay, I want to turn it over now to the College for Creative Studies. Whenever you are ready, take it away. Sounds great. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, my name is Amy Armand. I'm the Director of Recruitment at the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. And I'm really excited to talk to you tonight about CCS. Um, I am not an alum of the college, but both of my kids are. Um, and so I do also have a parent perspective, which I think if there's any parents on the call and you have any questions about what it might be like for your student to attend um, a College of Art and Design, I would be happy to talk to you more in depth about that. So let me give you a little bit more information. As I mentioned, CCS is located in Detroit, Michigan. We were actually born in Detroit in 1906. Um, we originally started out as a Society of Arts and Crafts and began offering degrees in the mid-1970s. The notion of craft or the physical making of things with one's hands is still really vital uh, to our core curriculum. That's why you'll even see some of our design-based majors working with their hands and not just on a computer. The city itself, especially the downtown and the midtown areas where we're located, have undergone an amazing transformation in recent years. Um, we are known as the Motor City. Um, we're also home to the Detroit Institute of Arts, Eastern Market, which is a huge outdoor farmer's market. We have a bike share program called MOGO, um, something called Murals in the Market, which happens each year. It's an international mural festival. Um, we have our own public transit system that runs through the heart of downtown and, and um, throughout the city. Um, Detroit is really an exciting city to be in right now, especially for artists, and it continues to grow and expand almost by the day. And of course, my dog has decided to join in the, the fun as well. So my best town Merlin is, uh, is helping me do this presentation. Um, to introduce CCS, I'd like to talk a little bit about what sets us apart. Um, it's our size, it's our setting, our outstanding facilities, the breadth of our majors, sponsored projects, and connections to creative industries and organizations. We're a private, nonprofit, and fully accredited institution, and we offer a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 11 majors and a certification in art education. We're really proud of our uh, diverse student body, um, which includes a student faculty ratio of nine to one. 
uh, with class sizes not exceeding 21. So we don't do large le lecture classes here, um, which is a big difference between us and a state school or university program. We have just under 1400 students who are attending from many, many states and foreign countries. In addition to our undergraduate degrees, we also offer 20 minors, nine emphases and four master's degrees. So we want our students to be well-rounded. About a third of your curriculum will be liberal arts based while two thirds will be your core studio art courses. The great thing about being a student at CCS is that if you have multiple areas of interest, you'll have the ability to minor in another area of your choosing. We're also really proud of the awards that we've earned and these are testament to the success our alumni experiences. CCS has been named one of the top three design schools in the US by LinkedIn. Um, which is really significant because it's based on data that LinkedIn has access to about our alumni, where they graduated from and their current positions working in their field. We've also been named a best value school by both Payscale and Money Magazine and have received a Women's Choice Award for America's Best Colleges. We're also recognized as one of America's best architecture and design schools uh, by Design Intelligence. And for those interested in transferring credit to CCS, we're one of only three schools in Michigan to be recognized as a transfer friendly school by Phi Theta Kappa. Our alumni have careers at companies where you wanna work. Our alumni network is very strong and our excellent internship and recruitment events are testament to that. We have on-campus recruiting events as well where students receive internships and full-time job offers right on campus. Our graduates have gone on to become designers, entrepreneurs, or go into business for themselves. They successfully manage studios, galleries, creative and community spaces, and exhibit and sell their work. Some job titles our grads have include concept designer, photographer, graphic designer, fine artist, interior designer, documentary, documentarian, and the list goes on and on. For those uh, juniors and younger tuning in tonight, I would highly recommend looking into our pre-college summer experience program. It's a three week, three college credit program that will help you build your portfolio and helps you get a feel for a particular major while you're experiencing what it's like to attend a college of art and design. For students in the Detroit area, we also offer dual enrollment where you can earn college credit while still in high school. Um, these credits meet your CCS undergraduate program requirements and develop strong work for your portfolio. And last but not least, I wanna discuss briefly our easy application process. We only need three things from you. The online application form, which is super easy and takes about 10 minutes to complete. We need to see eight to 12 uh, pieces of work, which we would call your portfolio and your high school transcript. So unofficial is okay. Um, be sure to send us any college transcripts if you have any college credit. We also accept AP and IB credit, um, but that's not part of the application requirements. You'll be automatically considered for scholarships when you apply. There's no separate application for that. Last year, our average scholarship grant package was about $20,000, which is nearly half the cost of tuition. Um, if you still have questions or are interested in learning more about what CCS has to offer, we're just an email away. Um, please be sure that you can scan this QR code if you'd like to stay connected with us. We're also on all of the social media channels. Um, and I would encourage you to check out our website for student work, internships, study abroad, um, programs, as well as the many, many successful alumni stories that we have uh, to show you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, College for Creative Studies. Okay, we are going to turn it over now to Hope College. I want to give another plug for that Q&A. Make sure you get your questions in for all of our presenters today. Hope College, we're ready whenever you are. All right. Well, thank you very much. Tonight, you're gonna to hear about Hope College for a little bit, but you're gonna to listen to me. Um, kind of fun news, we're rebranding a lot of our social media. And I checked while we were online and a lot of the sites are different and up. So hope.edu is the website if you're interested to go to after my presentation. So you just heard from CCS in Detroit. Now you've got to take your brain and go west onto Lake Michigan Lakeshore and boom, you're at Hope College. We are a Christian liberal arts college right on the beaches of Lake Michigan. We have about 3,200 students. And like many of the other presenters you've heard, we're a smaller classroom size. So we're 11 to one student to professor ratio. Why that's important to us is the relationships. Relationships are so important to us with the professors. We look at your professors as mentors. 
The classroom setting is one of collaborative. You're working together with students, you're working with your, with your professor. So the classrooms are not meant to be competitive. We offer 93 different majors and so many times I'm asked, okay, Carrie, what is the most um, well-known major at Hope College? Well, we were founded in the sciences um, about 146 years ago. And so that's where our basis is. And from that, we've sprouted out into many different majors. We are also very well known in the arts. We were the first college in the United States to be accredited in all five areas of the arts. So that includes creative writing and then dance and art and music and theater. So it's really neat when we get these students who are interested in sciences or engineering or mathematics and, but boy, I love to dance and I love to do theater. And you might not major in both, but you can participate in both of those. As I said, we are founded in the sciences. So we're a school that does a lot of research in the natural and applied sciences. Um, we're ranked number 36 in the United States, right with um, Columbia in undergraduate research. So I always say to students, if you want to do research with a professor in biology or chemistry or genetics or, um, uh, engineering or computer science, any of the natural and applied sciences, you can do it at Hope College. It's not for the select few. So academically, what, what are we looking for at Hope College? Well, we're looking for students with about a 3.2 and above GPA. We are a Phi Beta Kappa school, so we're an honors college. Our average GPA of the class that's coming in right now is a 3.8. So academically, we're really very, very strong. We're an undergraduate institution. So we hang our hat on getting you ready for that next step, whether it's graduate school or getting a full-time job right away out of college. The other part of the equation that is very important to us is the community. And as I mentioned, we are a Christian school and we are a little unique in this. We are an invitational school. We have chapel services. They're wonderful. 1,400 seats in there. It's packed. It's all non-denominational. Great music, great message, but it's an invitation. We are not a check the box. You have to go to chapel. You have to do this. If you'd like to participate, wonderful. We'd love to have you. But a lot of our students do participate. So we have Bible studies, small groups, things like that going on on campus. The other part of our community that is incredibly vibrant is all of the organizations that are on campus. Interestingly, 86% of our students um, stay on campus on the weekends. So there are a lot of things going on like Thursday through Sunday night. Why is this important? Well, when you wake up on Saturday morning, you wanna be happy where you are. Hope students wake up and they wanna know, do I go to the beach? Am I gonna go skiing? Um, am I, what time am I meeting with my classroom um, people? Um, what time am I doing this? But I wanna make sure that I can put all these fun things on the calendar too. Why is this important in your college search? Because you wanna build a resume. You're gonna do well in your academics. You're going to have a good GPA. You're going to have good um, recommendations from your professors. But when you get into that interview for graduate school or for your job, you want to have an interesting background in the last three years. And when you go to a school that provides a lot of activities that you can either participate in or lead or even create, it builds a very interesting resume. On top of that, you heard many of the schools talk about internships. Yes, we're a school who does a lot of internships and we're really um, set in a neat place because we work with Holland, which is two seconds away from the campus and Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is about a 40 minute drive. And then we also have students two hours away that do a lot in Chicago. We have a lot of partnerships in Chicago. So you have a smaller town offering internships you have a mid-sized city, and then you have a large metropolitan city that we've established great relationships with. We are a D3, um, uh, excuse me, athletic school. So division three for us is, nope, there's no scholarships. 
though the interesting part of our D3 is that um, we are very competitive. We participate in the MIAA. And in that conference, um, we are one and two across the board. So if you are an athlete and you want that great school experience, but you want to play in front of a crowd, consider Hope College. Now, in this process, um, we're like many schools. Our application is free. Um, we're test optional now. And um, we have great merit scholarships. I would say if you're interested in Hope College, it's hope.edu. And when you're looking at it, check out who the, your admissions rep is and contact us so we can go into more details. I failed to really introduce myself in the beginning, so I want to. My name is Carrie. I work with students from Indiana and all up the East Coast. I've been with Hope 11 years, and I am not a graduate, but a mother of three that have graduated from Hope, um, all with jobs. So it's a <laughs> wonderful, friendly place. All the best to you and thank you so much. Fantastic, thank you, Hope College. I'm sure a lot of the parents uh, heard that last little bit loud and clear there at the end. Okay, we are going to turn it over now to our last presenter of the evening. We are going to hear from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Whenever you're ready, take it away. We go. Hi, everyone. I'm Brent Jones, Associate Regional Director of Admissions with St. Mary's University of Minnesota. So you, as you see in this picture, we have a beautiful building on campus, St. Mary's Hall, but I am not located in Minnesota. I actually um, work out of the Chicago area and work with students in Illinois. I would be one of nine admissions counselors that works for St. Mary's. We, we do divide by um, territory. So you would be working with somebody just like me who would work really close with you and your family, going through the process, helping you with everything from application through financial aid and all the next steps. So St. Mary's is actually located in Winona, Minnesota, which is down in the Southeast corner of the state. It's actually in the corner where Iowa Minnesota and Wisconsin all come together. Winona does sit on the Mississippi River. It's a little unique in landscape in that we have very high hills that are next to the Mississippi River, which we refer to as bluffs. Um, lots and lots of outdoor recreation in the town of Winona. Winona is a town of just under 30,000 population. We do have three higher ed institutions in the town of Winona. So St. Mary's University, Winona State, and then we also have a technical school in town. Those three universities bring over 10,000 students to the town of Winona every year. So that adds about a quarter to our population. As I said, there's lots of fun things to do around the area, specifically with outdoor recreation. As you can see, the blocks off to the left there, they provide lots of opportunities for hiking, for rock climbing in the winter, for snow skiing, sledding. Um, we do have two lakes in town, which also provide opportunities to canoe, kayak, paddleboard, bike, rollerblade, fish, just about anything that you can think of that you would do on the water. So outside of that, we have a marvelous, uh, museum, which is an art institute. Um, we also have a very quaint downtown area, which provides lots of locally owned restaurants, cute little coffee shops, and boutiques. The university is actually um, an undergraduate institution. That means that they are students that have graduated from high school and are working towards that first bachelor's degree. So our campus in Winona has about 1,100 of those undergraduate students. There are no graduate students on our campus. Those graduate students are actually on our graduate campus up in the Twin Cities, which is about two hours north of us. That means that the professors that we have at, at St. Mary's University of Minnesota are dedicated to those undergraduate students. They are there because they want to teach undergraduate students. They want to um, help 
mentor those undergraduate students, and that is their primary interest. The campus is basically about a 50-50 ratio of male and female. We, the students represent 31 states and 19 countries. About 85% of our students live on campus all four years. As you can see in the picture, our campus is beautiful. About 100 acres of our campus is academic buildings, residence halls, athletic playing fields, but we own about 350 acres up in those bluffs. So um, 10 miles plus of uh, hiking trails. We have a trout stream. We have a disc golf course on campus. And we are within walking distance to a number of restaurants, coffee shops, grocery stores. But we do have a transit system that does come and pick up students on campus if there's things that are further away that they would like to go to. We are Division III Athletics. We are part of the MIAC Conference, the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. You can see on the screen the 17 sports between men, men and women that um, we have on campus. About a third of our students are student athletes. We also have a vibrant intramural um, group, and we also have some club sports. Some of those club sports that are pretty interesting are ultimate frisbee, volleyball, water polo, hockey as a club sport for men, Nordic skiing, soccer, and even ballroom dancing. We have a very strong theater and music and art program at St. Mary's. We do have four performance spaces and we have nine choirs and bands. I oftentimes tell students that if they are interested in music, they should definitely audition for one of our music scholarships. You can audition for music scholarships and get those scholarships and you don't have to major in music in order to receive those. With theater and art, you would have to be one of those majors in order to receive those scholarships. As you can see, there's lots to do and lots of student involvement. I would say a typical St. Mary's student is involved in lots of different things. So even if you are an athlete, you might be interested in joining a service organization. You might be interested in one of our special interest clubs, but our students tend to get involved in a variety of things. With academics, we have over 40 majors. All of those majors are majors that you go directly into if you are um, a student at St. Mary's, with the exception of two of our very competitive majors, which are our three plus two physician's assistant program that we do in partnership with Mayo and also our nursing program. We do offer lots of financial aid. We have scholarships that range from 20,000 to 28,000 for merit. We do have out of state grants. We have Catholic high school grants. We have legacy grants and we even have a visit scholarship. Lots of opportunities to find us on social media. And I will put in the chat my contact information so that you can reach out to me. Thanks for joining us this evening. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, St. Mary's University of Minnesota. And I want to thank all of you for being here. We're going to take advantage of having this group of experts in one place. We have only a few minutes left, but I want to ask each of our panelists here what piece of advice they would give someone going through the college search process due to time limited to your favorite piece of advice. We have just one here and we'll go in the same order, starting with Drake University. Thanks. I love this question. My biggest piece of advice for students is really consider location as part of your search. I think a lot of times students get really laser focused on clubs or majors or things like that. Certainly important. Make sure that you have a good list, but include location. What's so cool about the panelists here is like we all have very different communities that our schools are a part of, and that's going to be a really important part of making the right college decision for you. So make sure that when you do visit your schools in person, take a trip around the neighborhood, ask for some coffee recommendations, things like that, to really get a good sense of not only the campus community, but also the city and um, town that you'd be living in. Great, thank you, Drake. Marquette University, your piece of advice? Yeah, for sure. So I always think this process can be really overwhelming. And so when I talk to families, I focus on three different things, personal fit, financial fit and academic fit. I think those are three really important kind of boxes to think about. 
um, as you're going through the process to maybe make it a little bit less overwhelming, um, but to think of this kind of schools in each of those three categories. Fantastic, thank you. Valoy College. My piece of advice is to be selfish, um, which none of us do very well, but it's a very important piece of your process. Before you get too involved, I would encourage students to have a, a sit down with yourself and really think about what's important to you not what's important to your family and to your friends. Think about what gets you in your best headspace, in your best performance space, and then work hard and think critically about finding schools that can support that and promote that in you. That's great advice. Thank you, Beloit College. Uh, College for Creative Studies. Sure, I would say um, my best advice for students starting their college search process would be to start at the end, not the beginning. So don't get hung up on what it is that you need to do to apply to a school, but see what happens to students when they graduate and go on and um, you know, look, take a look at their websites, take a look at what kind of careers um, the alumni have, you know, the stories that are being told, because you wanna picture what, what it is that you wanna be doing in your life. And so you know, kind of start at, at that end point and then work your way back to see which colleges offer the kind of things that you're interested in and what it is you need to do to apply. I really like that framing. Thank you so much for that. Hope College, what is your advice? Yes, I guess my advice might be more in the beginning to middle and going to the end of the process is visit the colleges. Um, I talked about our great website that's being kind of rebranded, but you don't want to go and pick a college based on a website. Um, so I'm sure many of us, I know Hope offers um, uh, help with airfare so that our students can come and visit. And um, we are all, I'm sure on this call, so excited to be open woo, and have students on campus visiting. And so we have different days set up um, to accommodate you. Um, I think that is so very important in this process. All right, fantastic, thank you. This is a hard question to go last on, but do your best St. Mary's University of Minnesota. What advice do you have uh, for us? My advice is to utilize your admission company. Don't be afraid of us. We, we are here to help. We love what we do. We enjoy helping high school students. So please reach out to us with any and all of your questions, even if it's something small. That's great. Well, you know, it's good advice when everyone on the call is shaking in agreement. So <laughs> nice job there. I want to thank everyone here um, for being with us. I want to thank your pets for being with us as well. <laughs> that was a nice addition. Uh, we're sorry we went over a few minutes, but we hope you got some really useful information. Uh, just a few announcements. There is one more session taking place immediately after this. So take a look at that schedule and jump in to hear about a few other colleges. But then remember that after this one wraps up, Hopefully you'll reach out to these folks on the call here, do a little bit of Googling, learn more about their programs. And when you close this session today, you're going to have a very quick four question survey. Any feedback you can provide would be most helpful, but then within about a week, you'll be able to get this recording along with all of the others. If you missed out on anything that was said here, you can look that up later. Thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.